Let's talk about the Northeast State because in years past, really like the last five or six, since the conference really has been formed, we've always talked about a two horse race is a 1A, 1B with East Noble or Leo, just flip flopping in, in yeah. years past. Columbia City's had some nice teams. We've seen other teams have, have good seasons, but it's really been a 1A, 1B type of situation. Now the Norwell Knights, I think, are in the mix. How do you see this conference race playing out? Well, I think we're, we should, we'd should be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that Norwell's beaten East Noble each of the last two years in the regular season. Mm -hmm. They're back-to-back double-digit win seasons. Unfortunately, Leo has kind of been at that top that they haven't been able to get over. And circumstances, I think, between Norwell and what they have coming back and the fact that Leo is maybe a little bit of transition mode with Coach Jason Dorfler now there is Norwell ascends, in my opinion, to number one in the NE8, at least entering the season. Because you look at everything they have coming back, you know, from Leighton Bailey, quarterback, Luke Graff, two-way star, John Colbert, a two-way star, Brody Bolin, one of the best linemen in the area, if not the best linemen in the area. There's just so much to like across the board for Norwell. And, you know, I feel when you look at the other teams and you look at, at Leo and, and East Noble, is they're going to be there, but, man, Norwell really impressed last year, and they just basically bring back all their production. And the thing I like about Norwell is sometimes you have position groups that really stand out. Like, they've got guys at each individual level. Like, you, right. they've got Zetas up front. They've got Bolin yeah. up front. You're talking about the quarterback and Leighton Bailey, Colbert, and Graff. I mean, they have guys at every position at every level that return experience and return talent. It's sort of like – the Leo team we saw last year, right. um, whereas this is a class that you saw continue to grow since their sophomore right. season, they kind of feel like this year's Leo to a certain degree. Piggybacking off that, how do you see the Lions transitioning with Jason Dorfler? Um, brings a little bit more of a uh, pass-heavy offense, yeah. or more passing, I should sure. say, than they have in the past. I won't say pass-heavy. Uh, uh, um, and also East Noble, because again, sure. um, you know, they graduated a talented senior class in, in Munson, in Hood, in Zolman, yeah. um, but have Xander Brazel back at quarterback, as well as a lot yeah. of offensive linemen. You know, Leo is the fascinating team for me in the Northeast State, because as you mentioned, you know, new system with Coach Jason Dorfler. Some people are, you know, Thankful that, you know, it's finally modernized, right, uh, with the fact that Leo hasn't won a, a sectional title in 10 years. But the fact was they were perennial conference contenders mm -hmm. and conference winners. And the thing with that system that, that Leo employed with Jason Souter is it was very difficult to prepare for, right? And you could do everything right, but if you didn't have the horses to defend it, didn't matter, right? Now Leo is going to a more traditional offensive style where a lot more teams – play against or play that style that then they're ever going to be able to to prepare for so look i think in order for leo to reach that next level this was something that needed to be done uh, when you're talking about deep postseason runs that we've seen east noble able to take and even norwell you know went in a sectional last year but do they take a bit of a step back first and i think that's a question that going into the season is do they have the personnel with the experience in that system to run that system effectively and be able to be, you know, you know, beat the East Nobles and Norwells in the league? I think that's an open question. I think it's a fair question, and we'll have to find out once the season starts. The thing that I like about the Northeast State this year is that I feel like DeKalb could come up and bite somebody, yep. and I feel like with Mylon Graham, New Haven could come yeah. up and bite somebody. So it doesn't just feel like extremely top-heavy like we've seen it in years past. It feels like, sure, okay, like, those teams can't overlook a couple of those teams that are going to be in the mix, at least in the middle of the NEA conference this year. Yeah, I mean, DeKalb, I think, is a team that brings a ton back from last year and a lot of production that maybe not a lot of people recognize in the area. You mentioned Mylon Graham, whose summer just exploded in terms of recruitment. Have you seen anybody explode <laughs> in a summer quite like Mylon? Like no, Austin not Robertson a... kind of had that yeah. explosion too, but it's been a while since we've seen a guy go like, Hey, this guy's under recruited. Oh, by the way, Ohio State and Notre Dame. Yeah, like, right. And it's like you know, it went from it went from like Indiana offered in June to he goes down to Alabama for a camp and the Crimson Tide offer, and then Tennessee offers on his way back. Like mm -hmm. it's like okay, I use one thing, but when you're going down in SEC country and mm -hmm. getting offers, it's like yeah, wait, what? And then you start looking at New Haven in a different light because as you mentioned, you go Milan Graham, you're like just get him the ball every play. Yeah, right. So don't overthink it if you're in New Haven. <laughs> just get the ball. To Mylon Graham in space. Kick returns, punt returns, throw deep bombs. Yeah, right? R you know, rinse and repeat at yeah. this point. So, like New Haven, they can put it together. DeKalb, I think, has potential. Columbia City, I don't think you can overlook. They have some players. They the young have guys. to replace some guys. Yeah. yeah. But you look at Ethan Sievers coming back, who's one of the better running backs in the NEA. So, 
you know, a lot to like across the board in terms of the top five, six teams in that league. I think we'll have more interesting games on Friday night in that conference. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Sure. More like competitive games across the yeah. board. And I think that was something that over the last couple of years, you know, the NE8 could really hang its hat on is, you know, you really didn't know there was only one or two teams in there that you were just immediately written off. You know, when we talk about the ACAC in a minute, it'd be nice to get to a point where we had that in the ACAC.